Are you ready to lose those love handles? Do you work hard to stay in shape and eat healthy, yet you can't get rid of stubborn fat? Now there's a clinically proven way to help you look slimmer without surgery or downtime. It's called Sculpture. Sculpture's innovative procedure destroys fat in just 25 minutes with visible results as quickly as six weeks. Sculpture sounds amazing, right? Check it out for yourself by clicking on the banner or go to goodbyefat.com. Blog Talk Radio. Blessings from the Darkness is an eclectic collection of writings by a talented and diverse group of writers and published authors in dedication of and in support of our dearest friend, the award-winning and best-selling author Yvonne Mason and her son. All sales of this anthology, present and future, are donated to her in support of her son, who at the time of this publication has been ill and out of work and struggling to support his family due to an undiagnosed illness. Yvonne has been an inspiration, selflessly supportive, and a dear friend to many aspiring writers and indie authors. She believes in paying it forward, offering her knowledge and insights and friendship to kindred souls. Yvonne has a saying, she threatens to let loose the flying monkeys when there is wrongness in the lives of those near and dear to her. So after bringing us together for a successful and fun-filled double anthology by Yvonne, including notable authors and first-time published writers, and after learning about the continued troubles of her son and his family, we came together as such monkeys to fly free, far, and wide in what we do best, G.L. Lentz. This book can be purchased at Amazon.com, Amazon Kindle, Barnes & Noble, and www.blackbook.com. Bed sheet books. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is Friday night, and if it's Friday night, you better be here on Off the Chain with me, your host, Yvonne Mason. And yes, that was a piece of shameless promotion. Yes, my son is still ill, and yes, all of the proceeds from Blessings from the Darkness do go to him. I do not get any of those royalties. And I have to give a shout out to all of my fellow authors and friends who surprised me with that book. That was one of the the kindest things anyone has ever done to me. You will find many, many, many different authors in their diversity of works in that book, from scary to frightening to, I don't know, horrible. But not the writing is horrible, but the stories will just, you won't be able to put the book down. And my friend, Nicholas Grabowski with Black Bed Sheets, published that book. My friend and my publisher, Kelly Koch, with Dressing Your Book, helped edit that book. And if I'm not mistaken, my friend and fellow author, who is my guest tonight, also has a story in that book. So it was a family affair, and I love each and every one of them for it. As of this morning, ladies and gentlemen, now... Every time we do this show, I say, if you want to come on the show, just contact me at offthechainradio at yahoo.com. And the reason is because we are heard in over 50 countries all over the world. Uh, There's so many of them now, it's almost too many to, to mention. But as of this morning, we were at 5,244 listeners just on this show, just on Blog Talk Radio. That does not include all of the other podcasts that this show shows up on, which is iTunes and YouTube and FM.com and TuneIn Radio, SoundCloud, MixCloud, Stitcher, um, Spreaker, Podcast.com, Podomatic, and Podcast Garden. This show's heard everywhere. And the total amount this morning of... All of the listeners on all of the podcasts and the show itself, we're at 12,345 listeners. My goal was 15,000 by the end of the year. Well, we're going to hit that in the next couple of months. So we're going to bump it up to 20,000 by the end of the year. I see no reason why we can't. So when I say that this is a platform for you to be heard and to use as a tool to become successful, I'm not lying. People that have been on this show... Let me know all the time, Yvonne, because of you I'm doing this. 
because of you. In fact, the band Cypher is coming back. I had them scheduled for Wednesday night, but now they're coming on Tuesday night because they got a gig on Wednesday night, and it's all because they came on this show and they're now being heard all over the world. And I have to give a shout-out to Australia because they are our biggest listeners here on Blog Talk Radio. 72% of our listeners are out of Australia. So thank you, guys. I appreciate your continued support. Tonight, a friend of mine who I've known for, seems like forever, a fellow author, he's a martial arts expert, he is an artist, God, I don't think there's anything this man can do. Tom Fortrell, and for those of y'all in the horror world, you know him as T.G. Reaper. He is he has come back tonight to tell me what he's been up to. Oh, not only is an award-winning, best-selling author, he's also a screenwriter. He also has a clothing design. He's also a clothing designer for the same company I do, Vita.com, and he has his art hanging in galleries. Tom has studied the martial arts for nearly 40 years and has been inducted into the Martial Arts Masters Hall of Fame. And he lives out in the country with his two daughters, his wife, and he says way too many cats. But, yeah, I find that hard to believe. Hello, my friend. How are you? Hi. How's it going? Good. Gee, I'd forgotten you had art hanging in galleries and you were a screenwriter Geez, is there nothing that you can't do? I cannot sing to save my life. Well, that makes two I of s- us, but we won't hold that against you. <laughs> yeah, appreciate that. <laughs> I don't like to sing anyway, except when I'm by myself and in my car and nobody can hear me but me, and then it doesn't matter. <laughs> that, that's me. I'll sing to the dashboard. <laughs> the yeah, there you go. <laughs> so for the folks that have not heard you and I on this show, Mm -hmm. and shame on them if they haven't, because (laughs) obviously they're missing out, tell the folks about you. I mean, you're a screenwriter, you're an author, you're a comic strip expert, you are a, you design clothing, you design, put designs on Vita's products like I do, I'll get it out in a minute. You're a martial mm-hmm. arts expert. How did you do all this? I don't sleep <laughs> much. Oh, well, well um, I understand. Yeah, it's just, just um, like when I was young, I when I originally got started like in martial arts when I was young, I, I set a goal, the three goals. I said by the time, like I, I was 10, and I said, okay, by the time I'm 18, I want to be a black belt, an instructor, and a champion of some type. I turned 17, I did all three. So I was like, oh, if I could do that, I could do anything. So I just started setting goals for everything in life, and I just keep fighting towards it. You know, art, um, writing, um, continuing to learn new and, and more martial arts. Um, it's just something I do. I just keep moving forward. Do you find that if you stop moving forward that you get bored? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Do you also find that everything that you do, I don't think enhances is the other word, but it stretches you in the other things that you do? Oh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, and and the really cool thing about it too is, um, like everything I do, regardless of what it is, it's helping other people. You know, my writing entertains, um, my artwork entertains them. It's really cool, and I, you know, I find out hey, that you know they're hanging my stuff here and there. That's just amazing to me. Um, and the martial arts. I mean, I, I've, I've taught like back. A few years back, I started a program for the homeless here in town, and I was teaching them um, because people were they were being messed with, unfortunately. So I started a program for them. I've taught poor. I've taught people who couldn't afford actual lessons. Um, but it was my way of giving to the community. It was my way of giving back. And, um, you know, I, again, that's one of my many, many goals is to help others. 
let's back up to where you started a program for the homeless. When you mm-hmm. trained those men and women, and I'm sure some of them were even children, did you yeah, there see was, there was a, a couple. did you see a difference in their mental attitude about themselves? Oh yeah, yeah, I saw. I mean, you you could see the self confidence growing. You could see they were no longer ashamed of themselves. You know, they were they were doing something. They were working towards something. Um, which is always fantastic to see. You know, I mean, the self esteem starts to rise. I was like, hey, I can do something. I am, a, I am able to do something, and it's it's just a good thing to see. I mean, it's see that develop in someone and know that that you had a part in helping them with that. You know, and so I mean, I don't be, know. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> would it, well, I was going to say, would it be safe to say that after some of those? learned martial arts and became more self-confident, that could have possibly and probably led them to get out of that state of homelessness. Oh, yeah, I know at least three people that that, that I know for sure, at least three of them I know moved on. They were able to, like, you know, get get jobs, find work, and, uh, you know, move on with, with their lives, get their own places and everything. So martial arts are not, because I took martial arts, and I never felt so empowered in all my life. But martial arts, yeah, really, they don't just strengthen the body. They strengthen the mind, the spirit, the intellect, the intelligence. They strengthen the entire person. Would that be a proper statement? Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, it um, I mean, it, it builds your confidence level. It um, it shows you like if you can get over those kind of challenges, you can get over anything, and it gives you the confidence to move forward like that. But yeah, plus, I mean, it's it's good health benefits, of course, and you know, and it's good to be able to protect yourself. But you know, you, you can look at at a, a at a technique or something and be like, man, there's no way in a million years I could do that. And you just start working at it, working at it. Three months later, there you are, you're throwing it perfectly. And you don't you know, have to think about it that. because it comes, it's second nature then. If you have to use it, you don't have to think through it because your your mind and your body is so in tune with itself, you just do it. Exactly. It's all muscle memory. You know, it just happens on its own. You have been busy. You have been one <laughs> yeah. busy, busy man. When do you, yeah, that's true. and I know you work on top of it, you work an outside job. Oh, yeah, yeah, I work full time um, at a retirement community. And like you say, you don't sleep. Neither <laughs> do I. But sleep's overrated. I have decided that sleep is overrated. It is, very much so. Yeah. I mean, if you get an hour a day, you're you're doing good. Some days I get 30 minutes. But not only are you writing your own books, but you've started mm-hmm. ghostwriting. Yes, yes, I have. And you and I were talking about this a little bit before the show. And ladies and gentlemen, Tom and I have been at this for a long, long time. I started in the 70s. Didn't get published until 2007, so that's how long I worked at it. So when a new writer comes to me and says, "Well, I wanna, I wanna get an agent. I wanna get published by the big six. I wanna do this. I wanna do that. I'm gonna be big and famous." I just smile and say, "Well, bless your heart," because I'm from <laughs> the south, and that can be an insult or a compliment depending on the context of the conversation. <laughs> it, yes. And, and Tom, you and I both mm-hmm. say it, dream big or go home, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, Always got to shoot big. Always. But we don't depend on someone else for our dreams, right? Right on. That's on us. So when you get a young author who is going past the moon out into, I call the netherworld, yeah. And you're trying to steer them into this is how you, if you were really want this, this is how you go about it. And they fight you at every 
bend in the road because they don't get that you're saying, I've been out here a long time. We walked this block many, many times. What do you do? Um, well, you say bless your heart. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's all you can do. I mean, it's like the whole leading the horse to water thing. You know, you just you, you show them, you, you tell them, you're like, you know, I've done this. I know this. Trust me. Let me do this. Let me help you with this. And then you hope that they will actually listen to you. Um, some well, some do, some not so much. Well, well, what is so sad is they had this fire in their belly, and then they get discouraged when they hit the. And I mean, they don't. And you know, Tom, they just don't hit this brick wall. They slam right to it. They become like oh, yeah. glue on it. Yeah. And then they let it define them. Yep. They get discouraged. And they give up on the dream, and before they even have a chance to actually even really start living that dream, they exactly. walk away from it because it's too hard. You know? Well, if it was easy, had... anybody could do it. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> Think about it. Think about how many years you and I have been out there, and we pound the pavement every single day. We yeah, get we rejected. Do. Yep. We, get, we get laughed at. We get bad reviews. We get yep. told that our work's not good enough, and thank God for the song. Thanks for all those people that told me no, because we have learned how to, if we can't go over the mountain, we go around it. If we can't go right around on. it, we're going to go through it. If yep. we can't go through it, we're just going to move the damn mountain and make our own way. That's right. Yeah, we don't stop. We keep moving forward. Yep. And that's why we've lasted. Yep. So, ladies and gentlemen, if if you're wanting to write a book and you're saying, well, I'm going to write this book. It's going to be the next bestseller, and it's going to be a movie, and everybody's going to love it, and I know it's the best because I've written it. Okay, bring it back down to earth just a little bit. Yes. Be reasonable. Baby the big steps. six don't care because the big six has been telling us what to read for as long as the big six has been in business. True. And they don't Very like true. us. <laughs> they don't like us because we have opened up an avenue to readers that they don't have to be told what to read anymore. Am I right, Tom? That's exactly right. So be proud that you're an indie author, and if you need help knowing how to market, get hold of Tom or myself or anybody else in our circle because we can help. This show is part of it. This is how you get out there. And speaking of getting out there, tell the folks about your new endeavor and horror Comic strips. I've never heard of such. Oh, yeah. Um, Darkness Within Easing. Um, I write articles for them. Um, look like based true hauntings and that kind of thing. Um, very good easing. If you guys ever a oh, shameless promotion, but if you ever get a chance to go to the website and check it out, it's really cool. Um, a lot of great great writers and stuff. Um, I was discussing with the editor of, of of the magazine about um she was mentioning that there's like they're doing horror art and you know and they've invited me to like write horror fiction to go along with the articles which is I'm honored for that and by the end of our conversation we've um she's given me the green light to start my own horror comic strip um it could be like anywhere from three to six panels um Cliffhanger, of course, uh, different stories. I could create my own cast of characters. I'll be writing the story plus doing the artwork on it. Um, I'm looking, this going to be a challenge because it's something different for me, but it's something I've always wanted to do. And, um, you know, I can't wait. I know the, um, the deadline is starting to loom a little bit. Um, but, again, that's just another goal to reach, and that's, that's what I'm going to be doing with it. Um, well, you work best under pressure anyway. 
Oh, I do. You're right. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's, <laughs> that, that seems to be my thing. <laughs> I, I remember writing that. Yeah, tell that story. <laughs> yeah, I remember <laughs> writing this the script for Action Turkey, and they're like emailing me like while they were filming it. Oh, this scene won't work. You got to write us something else. So it's like, we're waiting for it. It's like, oh, my God. So we're like speed typing it and trying to send it to them. And, okay, we don't have the budget for that. It's like, ah. So, <laughs> but we got through it. That baby got made. So, but yeah, that was that's, that seems to be my thing. You know, the more pressure, the better I seem to put out. <laughs> yeah, that came out wrong. Uh, why do you give yourself <laughs> ulcers like that? I'm telling you, I don't know. I'd run for punishment, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> is it when the creative juices come to the top of the 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 churn, or? I think it is with with me at least. I think so. I think you're just sadistic. If you want to know the truth, <laughs> 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 a masochist one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could be some truth to that too. <laughs> I've never seen anybody that waited till five minutes before the deadline to send something in. I nail it though. That's crazy, but I can nail it. Uh, it's so far, I mean, not that I would. I now, try. you've got <laughs> you've got some stories and some new anthologies too, right? Oh, um, man, yeah. Uh, trying to remember which ones are in now. <laughs> Since the last time we talked. Um, well, it's a bunch of them because you just put up the new covers. Oh yeah, that was um, I think that was a yeah, the Darkness Within anthology. On um, the same, the same easy. They just put up a, they just did a book like, like with some of our stories in it, and the proceeds all go to Alzheimer's. Um, and yeah, yeah, that was after our last conversation. But yeah, yeah. That's, that's the newest one. Man, yeah, yeah, um. Can't remember who published it. I know it's through dark, Darkness Within. They had a coolest cover. Man, I love the cover for it. Um, I'm, I'm using my cover. So maybe you'll be getting. Here. Maybe you'll be getting some of the proceeds from the book to help you with your senior memory loss. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. Yeah. And you're not as old as uh, I am. You're t- you're too uh, young I'll to be having it. those senior moments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, that, that's that's the problem with having like with going after so many goals at once. Is you kind of you reach that goal and you kind of tend to forget that you reached it because you're already thinking about the next one. <laughs> 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 and that's been my problem next, for years. Speaking of the next goal, mm-hmm. you are you, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing harder in this world than to ghostwrite for somebody else. I won't do it. Number one, it I'd hard. Be, I, I would kill somebody or make them wish they were dead <laughs> or say, bless your heart till they were sick of hearing yep. it. <laughs> because yep. oh, man. It, my concept of a scene and their concept of a scene might be polar opposites. And we might we might not even get past that chapter because they won't come around to my way of thinking. <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> oh, that sounds so familiar. <laughs> so, how in the world, Tom is as a type personality as you are? How in the world did were you able? To do, I mean, I'm talking about a challenge, honey. That wasn't a challenge. That was self-inflicted pain or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, you know that old show, Mission Impossible. <laughs> That's what cool striking oh. is. Mission <laughs> Impossible. No, it wasn't Mission Impossible. It was Mission Improbable. Impossible. Yeah. You can do in the, you can do standing on your head. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> Improbable. You got to stand on your head, your arms, and your nose, and everything else. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my. Yeah. Now, just just for the the sake of the audience, we won't call any names, but this is a this mm-hmm. is a a teach this is a teachable moment, as I'm fond of saying. Explain to the audience why we're having this chuckle. 
because like we both said earlier, we've been around this block many, many times. Oh, yeah. So oh, explain yeah. to the audience the the story behind this chuckle. Okay. Okay, yeah. Um, when um, I, I, I agreed to do the, the story, um, I, I'm working with a really talented screenwriter. He went to Full Sail University. He's uh, learned directing. He's worked on, like, movies. Done the whole thing, done the Hollywood thing. The guy is brilliant. Okay. And therein um, lies the problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's brilliant. He's, he's a great, great screenwriter. I love his scripts. Okay. He's not used to writing books. He doesn't read many books. Um, he really doesn't know. I like, um, like I had, I had, but we worked on it. I wrote for him reviewed and the person who reviewed it said that it reminded them of a Patricia Cornwell novel. He wasn't sure who she was because he'd never read her. Oh my um, lord. Yeah, Did I mean nothing, him nothing against her? him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean he's, he's like I said, he's great with movies. I mean he could he could nail any screenplay, but this was this was like a different arena for him. And um you know, we were working on the story and stuff, and, like, the first five chapters, we keep wanting to go back and review, go over, fix up, whatever, um, instead of just getting it written. Um, you know, he was, he was looking for first draft perfection. And to all you new writers out there, um, no such thing, okay, your first draft you write from your heart, then you use your head to polish it. Okay, exactly. you get it out there, you get it written, and then you go back and fix it. It's like, it's like you like you're drawing a map. Okay, you draw the map, and then you go back and you start putting in the exit signs. You don't do it as you're going. You'll never get it done. It will never be finished. And um, so we we had a deadline set, and we were getting very scary close to the deadline, and we only had the five chapters because we kept going back and polishing. And so finally he gave me free reign to just write it. And, you know, I'm not trying to be a braggart, but, you know, I've won the last four or five Nanoremos in a row. I'm used to writing under pressure. I'm used to writing fast. I did the novel in a week and a half. I'm halfway through the polishing mark now. Um, But he didn't know, and this is why this is such a good teachable moment that a lot of new writers don't know. I mean, there's nothing against him. The dude's brilliant. Like I say, he's brilliant. Nothing against him at all. He's awesome. I love working with him. Um, bless his heart. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, you just you get your first draft out. You don't worry about the mistakes. You don't worry about any of that until after you have something to work with. Get the whole story out there and then go back and polish it before you send it anyplace. Make sure you polish it before you send it anyplace. But and, and also don't try you to make let every... It. You should also let it sit for 24 hours before you go back and start polishing it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I waited two days. So, yeah, you're you're very correct there, too. Yes. You, you do that way you can look at it with fresh eyes. But if you're looking at it right after you get done writing it, you're not going to see what you need to be seeing. you got to get no, it to the subtle. I have done that, and, and I have seen what I thought I wrote, and then when I went back three days later, funny thing, it wasn't what it was supposed to be, but I could have sworn it was what it was supposed to be when I wrote it the first time. Yep, yep that's true. And then that's what usually happens, too. And and what screenwriters and journalists, technical mm-hmm. writers, um, procedure and policy writers don't understand is when they come out of that genre of writing and step into the literary world, it's like daylight and dark. They have to forget everything that they know in their craft. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, very different form of writing. Yes. And I have seen some journalists, newspaper journalists, who thought because they were newspaper journalists they could write a readable book. 
sadly not so much because it came out like a piece in the newspaper or the or a piece in a magazine. There was no meat to it. It 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 had a beautiful story, but there was no depth in the story. It was all one dimensional. Right. Yeah. It's almost like because they have so many words that they can use in a piece, they can only use one column or two columns or or 500 words, and they have to cram it all in into that, that little space, they forget how to let their three-dimensional mind take over. And it's okay to use one chapter to set a scene because you got another chapter right. to to go to the next place. Yeah, but like in a little screenwriting, you got to set that scene like on the first page or two. Right. Because every every uh, page is one minute on screen, and so and probably to, uh, what what this young man was doing is he was trying to set the scene in that first chapter, and you don't want to set the scene; you want to build up to the scene. Exactly right. Yep. And that's yep. what they yeah, forget because they, they're so interest they're so used to being in that box. Right. And, of course, you and I don't have a box. We don't even know what a box is oh. except to take out the trash. <laughs> yes, <exactly. laughs> yeah. Yeah. If we can hey, make um, it I, <laughs> I would like to say, though, um, in regards to this, this book that we're talking about, um not sure where it's coming, coming out at. Yeah, I'm not sure, like, the exact date or anything and so, stuff. I'm still working with him on the marketing side of it and on the uh on the um, publishing side of it. So you know, I'm hoping that by the time we're done, you know, he's gonna be able to just nail this any time afterwards. That's this particular goal. But I would like to say though, if you guys like good murder mysteries written by a normally great horror writer like myself, I think you'll really like this book. It's a great concept. Um he came to me with a concept I was I, I keep talking with the idea, and it's like my mind was blown. I was like, "Dude, this is brilliant!" Um, it's got copycat killers. It's got everything. It's got really good relationships and like subplots, and which you know I kind of had and saw a couple of those as well. But it's okay. Um, and that's that's what I was there for. But when you guys see it come out, I'll just keep an eye on my page. Um, once everything's said and done, you get a cover. We get a publisher and everything, I will start posting it and advertising it like crazy. You need to get Debbie um, to do a cover. Debbie can do a killer cover. Oh, I know. I love I love the work she's done. Um, I'm really, really hoping that we go in that direction. Um, but, um, yeah, once it's done, guys, I'm telling you, he should seriously, seriously check this book out. Um Usually I I finish a book and it's like okay this was good but I'm gonna do a better one next time. I'm actually honestly proud of this book, and I don't say that very often. Um, I think the only other book I've been really proud of was Empty Graves. That was my biggest seller, but this one, this one is like I don't know. It's like my heart's in this one. Something fierce. So hopefully you guys will get a chance to check it out. Well, I'll do a little him, shameless promotion. <laughs> uh, well, again, tell him that. To send it to Kelly, let's get this yep. book published, get the cover. We'll even help him promote it. I'll, we'll bring you and him on the show. We'll do an hour and a half That'd show be, with both of y'all. It'd be fantastic. Yeah, I'll, um, so I'm going to keep talking to him about it. I'm working with him next Wednesday. Um, I'm going to be meeting up with him and going over some stuff. So, you know, I'm going to keep keep moving it forward and, you know, seeing what we can do, seeing about, you know, getting getting the publisher, getting getting that cover, because, you know, that cover sells the book. Exactly. Um, it oh, really man, does. I'm telling you. Yeah, when I got yeah. the second cover for Empty Graves, I was like, oh, man, if I didn't already write this book, I'd buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's, cover's better than the book. Holy well, crap. The thing, I can go into a, I can go into a bookstore. And if a cover does not jump out at me, I won't even pick up the book. Oh, well, that's all I am too. Yeah. Because it's got to stand out. 
Yeah, and the synopsis has got to stand. And this is something else people don't understand. The first thing I look at is the synopsis of the book. And if the yep. synopsis is dry and boring, ah, like, oh, this isn't going to be any good. And I'll put even if the killer, even if the cover's killer. So the synopsis has got to pop just like the book. Yep. Yep. It's got to make you want yeah, to read that first chapter. Yeah, it has to. And this is something else yeah. that new authors do not understand: is you can't just say, "Well, this is the story of boy meets girl, boy kisses girl." Boy fights with girl. Boy loses girl. Does boy get girl back? Well, duh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just got to, you, you got to make it. <laughs> yeah, that's, and that's like a laundry list. That's, that's not really a good synopsis at all. <laughs> really? <laughs> I want to say, well, bless their hearts. To bet yep. they get back <laughs> I'm going to start saying that at work and people are going to be wondering, like, where do you get that from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when somebody's being really mean and nasty to you and trying to get on your case, just look at them and go, well, bless your heart. Are you having a bad day? Yeah. Shut them up real quick. I mean, they go, what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't know oh, if they've man. just been insulted or if they've just been empathized with. <laughs> Give me a touch of both. <laughs> Christ for them to determine. <laughs> yep. it's, a be- it's a beautiful su- because see, true Southern women aren't supposed to have what what my grandmother called the potty mouth because oh. I was a young lady and young ladies were supposed to have decorum and be above the common people. So we were taught very early from generations back. That if someone insults you or if someone's being dumb or if someone is just being, especially women, or if or if someone's wearing something that you wouldn't be caught dead in, you'd say, I wouldn't be caught dead in that, bless her heart. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> works, works every time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, well, you know, the poor thing didn't—he didn't have a, a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. Bless his heart. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. That's gonna be my new my new catchphrase. <laughs> and it works it. <laughs> because you yeah. totally insulted them, but they don't know it. <laughs> well, in the South they do, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you get in front of somebody's not from the South and you say it, they go, "Well, thank you." And you're smiling because you're saying, yeah, I just told you to drop dead and you didn't even realize it. Oh, I love it. Oh, man. Yes, you have my permission to be a Southerner, Tom. Uh, All right, thank you. It's an honor. But but you have to drag it out. You have to say, well, bless your heart. (laughs) And and just let it drip like, like honey from your mouth, but it's just so filled with sarcasm that the Yankees are going, huh? Your empathize, how kind of you. Or oh, they'll call you a son of a bitch in this phone, but they'll, they'll never know they've been insulted. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it works every time. Every oh, time. Can we use it? And, and you know, <laughs> something else that works really well is when you get a smart-ass kid. I mean, one of those that that think that they are walking the walk and they're talking the talk. And especially oh, yeah, I know a couple the, like that. Well, and especially in the South, if you look at them and you say, you know, your mama would be so proud of you, bless your heart. <laughs> Stop them dead in their tracks. Oh, man. I should be writing this down. <laughs> you should. See, ladies and gentlemen, see what you learn on my show. Because, <laughs> number one, I'm I'm a 66 years old, and I've learned a lot of tricks of the trade. I don't have to use martial arts if I don't need to. Because if you – and who was it that said speak softly and carry a big stick? Oh, um. Uh, was it Eisenhower? I think or so. Roosevelt. Yeah. I think, ooh, I want to say Eisenhower, but you know, it was one of them, yeah. Well, 
I learned a long time ago about. that if I speak very softly, people lean in to listen. And by the time I've said what I've had got to say, they're either dumbfounded because this 411 little old woman dares to get in their face, or they don't know what to say, so just they just throw up their hands and leave. <laughs> I resort to martial arts when I don't have anything else available that I've used all the air quiver arrows in my quiver. So, see, you too can do that. Yeah, yeah. You can look at it and say, your mama, must, your mama must be so proud of you, son. Bless your heart. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, man. So you can That's put that one in your book. Characters. Yeah. <laughs> Now the, the next character is going to be Southern. <laughs> oh, good Lord, help us. <laughs> yeah. Now you'll oh, have to yeah. come and say, Vaughn, how would, how would you say this in Southern? Because you, you you can't do it half Southern and half Northern. It has to be all Southern if your character is going to be. And you, they have to have the the dialogue and the and the dichotomy and the, the, the culture of a true Southern. Yeah. Because the yeah, Southerners are not going to say, "Use guys." That they're not going to say that. It's always y'all, and it's always y'all. how's your mama and them? How's your mama and them? <laughs> yeah, you're going to get a lot of emails from me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to right, me. I tell you what, that'll be <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> now, you have been given your next assignment. If you choose to accept it, this tape it's will accepted. self-destruct in thirty seconds. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what, what what do you have besides your ghost writing book um and your your comic strip? What else have you got going on? Uh working on my next um short horror fiction collection. Um I just 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 getting started with that. Um I got Hauntings which Kelly has. Um I'm still thinking debating Try to make up some decisions and stuff before I complete that obligation. Um, and um, what is there to, what is there to the... think about? You're oh, overthinking um, it, son. It's not that it's not that hard to think about. You know me. <laughs> Stop over. Am I going to have to reach through the telephone like I have to reach through the computer <laughs> and gib slap you to say turn it loose and let it go? How long has it yeah, been since you put something out there? You you've done that to me a few times. I need it every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it's been a minute. It's time to get your stuff back out there. Yeah, let it, yeah go. it has. It's, it's been too long. I well, think last, Kelly's got last, it. Let her have it and let her do it. Yeah, <laughs> sure. And the last book I put out there, I think, was The Roadhouse. That was what three years ago. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm I'm past due. I am so uh, past yeah, due right think? now. Your fans, your fans have gone through withdrawal. Many of them have gone on to another life. Those that knew you oh. have probably forgotten you. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, speaking of, I did just remember. Um, I'm going to be in Gentlemen of Horror again this year. Um, I was in last year, and I was in 14. It's kind of. To me, it's, it's kind of like a best of type of thing, uh-huh. and so when I was when I was given the opportunity to have one, and she told me that I'd be the first one they've had that, that did one like two years in a row. Usually, it's at least another year before they do another one. Um, I was just I was like, oh God, thank you. I would love to be part of this. So I do have that coming out too. Um, I'm still working on the the story for that. Um, a I think my last one was an apocalyptic Bigfoot story, which was really was really weird. But you know, it, they weren't, and they accepted it. So <laughs> they they accepted my weirdness. <laughs> well, we are all weird in our own eclectic way. Also, ladies and True. gentlemen, he is in my anthology, Satan's Hol- Satan's Holiday, which we mm-hmm. put out what three years ago. Three yeah, after about three years. Uh, let's well, see. Like 2012? Four, or year, four or years like ago, my child. Satan's Holiday's been out four years. Yes. So, um, 
it's time. It's time. I'm telling you, people are having withdrawals. Do you want them to gnaw their arm off because you don't have a book out there? Oh, in 2014, did you put one in Merry Scary Christmas? I yeah, I did. Yep, that was I did do that. Okay, um, that was three years ago. I did um some Kindle short stories. Um, and I did a, but that's a not like your book though. Oh, I know it's not the same. I did do a, a non-fiction a martial art book last year. Uh, again, I went straight to Kindle. But, yeah, nothing print-wise. Print um, it's It's been it's been a minute. It, it's been a minute. And, and yeah, people I, are, are they've, they've told me they, they are going through withdrawal. The apocalypse is going to come through, and they're going to tell them they can't go because they're waiting on you to do a store, to do a book. And they're gonna get the writing. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna die in their chairs waiting on T. G. Rip Reaper because he's slow on the draw. He's got something at the publishers, and he won't turn it loose for God knows why. Bless his heart. Maybe he's waiting on the apocalypse. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that was good. I love how you <laughs> slipped that in there. Slid it right in oh. there. <laughs> so now that just was, turn that it that was, that was as pretty as Frank <laughs> <laughs> Did that knife turn just you, a little bit more? Because <laughs> you know he's pretty. <laughs> oh, yes, he is pretty. I wonder if he's listening yes. tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, we're I talking about our is. friend. I do, too. We're talking about our friend Frank Bittinger, who is also an author, who's been on my show a couple of times. And his his um, by word is he is so pretty and he is pretty. I'm telling you, the man is is one beautiful human being, and he's not yeah, afraid he's to tell guy. you he's pretty either. Yeah, well, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Bless his heart. <laughs> Bless his heart. And and the 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 publisher we keep talking about is my publisher. It's dressing your book, and Kelly Coke is is the co owner of that. And that's why I keep saying send it to Kelly because I don't know what you're waiting on, but it's not going to happen. So just send her a note tomorrow and say, Kelly, run with this. Give her something to do. Keep her off the streets. And we've got to keep her off the corners, really. (laughs) Oh, man. I'm learning about my publisher. (laughs) (laughs) She would laugh. Oh yeah. She yeah. would she would absolutely laugh. Because you've got all this stuff out there, but we don't have a book, Tom. Yeah. Book. Yeah. We need to make well, that happen. Well what are you waiting on? Uh go forth and oh. and publish or do you need a blessing, you know, with the cross sign of the cross and all that? Well, you know, that never hurts. <laughs> Do I need to send a, a, an exorcist to exorcise the demons from within? I mean, I can do that. I'll just send the monkeys up there. All right, all right now. I'll do two with the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> that little guys are tough. <laughs> Don't be wanting me to send the monkeys. The monkeys aren't aren't pretty, unlike Frank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he He's so pretty. <laughs> oh, Lordy mercy. Okay, so oh, it is yeah. now determined that you are going to um, send that to Kelly. Now, have you got any new artwork hanging up in the galleries? Um, Not yet. Um, I'm waiting. There's going to be an event coming up in July that I'm going to be sending some stuff for to see if it will be accepted into it. Um, it'll be my third showing at that gallery. Uh, I've been... Yeah, last two years um, during their summer thing that they've had my work. Um, I do have a piece that went to New York. Um, it's just one piece, but still hanging in New York, you know. That's huge. Wow. For me. Yeah. That is huge. Um, Where did it go in New York? Oh, man. Oh, what's that gallery called? Uh, it's a huge event and you forgot the gallery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Too too many goals I'm thinking of. I'm already working on my next thing. Um, oh, God oh help. hey, I didn't tell you this either. Um I am taking some art classes. 
I'm going to improve a little bit more. And the guy I'm taking it from uh, used to draw for Marvel, and he worked. He's worked for uh, Cartoon Network, and he he did like the artwork on What's New Scooby Doo and the Teen Titans, and and I've already nice. seen a huge improvement in my artwork. This is just the few classes I've had with him, and he's like, I mean, he's like unlocked a lot of doors in my head as far as art goes, and I'm already seeing a really good positive difference in it. I had to share that too. <laughs> well, as you should. That that is marvelous because oh man, the more you hone your your art skill, the more you're gonna hone your your plot skill for your books. Because like we talked about earlier, this, ladies and gentlemen, art whether it's in music, whether it's drawing, painting, writing, it all goes sculpting, it all goes hand in hand because when you unlock one of those doors, another door unlocks in a different phase of the art world. It It's amazing what happens. It, it, just like a little bit of shameless promotion, I had no... Design work was not on my radar anywhere because I'm already so overloaded. I don't even remember what day it is, much less what time it is. And Vita dropped in my lap and said, we want you. And I'm going, why? And they did it. And I turned them down the first time. And they came back the second time. And I said, well, I best not turn them down a second time because I may not walk this path again. And it was like you, it, it just exploded. Yeah. Yeah, the same, same thing that happened with me. Are you still putting your designs up on Vita? Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, um, man, what was it? They just sent me a thing recently. Something about designing their throw pillows or something, some kind of pillow design. I haven't like oh, looked into it that deeply yet because my other classes and stuff, but um, that's something I was gonna look into. Um, I've, I've been doing the tote bags, the shirts, the scarves, especially the scarves. Um, but a lot of people have been buying the scarves, which I'm really appreciative of. Um, yeah, I'm still I'm still working on it. I'm coming up with some new designs. In fact, I got one. I was thinking about sending to them. Uh, it's kind of an abstract type design, but the more mm-hmm. I look at it, I could I could see that as a throw pillow. You know, just just by looking at it, yeah. This is see, well, oh, stop oh. thinking and just do it. It's like your book that Kelly's got. Stop thinking about it. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as yeah, Nike says, yeah, just do to. it. And my brother, <laughs> who is my brother Stan, you remember we talk about him a lot, ladies and gentlemen. He's challenged, yeah. but he's smarter than everybody in the entire room. And he would say, as we were standing in the Halloween store one day, and I found these beautiful pirate boots, and they had three-inch heels, and I looked at them and looked at them, and I said, well, what do you think, Stan? He said, well, try them on. He calls me Yvonne. Try them on, Yvonne. So I did. And then I said, well, what do you think? He said, just get them. Don't think about it. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> Good advice. Yeah. So just do it. Don't don't think about the book. Don't think about the design. Just do it. Just do it. Get it out there. Yeah, yeah, I should. And then you can forget conveniently forget about it and move on to the next goal. Yeah, yeah. I got a few hundred of them still in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can you believe our hour's almost up? Oh, man, that's too quick. I'm telling you, you got to come back. Yeah, definitely. You got to be. I'm, I'm going to bring you back in August. That's the first opening I've got. How about if I bring you back in August? Absolutely. Okay. By then, the book will be in Kelly's hands and she'll be running with it and we can talk about it, right? Sounds good to me, yeah. All right, I'm yeah, hoping last time we, Last time we talked, I was still just kind of in the process of negotiating with them. And yeah. We've already had one big step forward. Now we just got to take that next step. Yeah. So we're not going to yep. overthink it because I'll send the monkeys up there. Forget the exorcists. I'll just send the monkeys. Oh, man. There you go, the monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, real quick. You know we do this at the uh-huh. end of every show. 
if someone comes to you like the young man did and says, I have this dream, what would you tell them? I'd say go for it, and if I can help you in any way possible, let me know so I can do it. Would it be a fair statement to say not to limit yourself to one dream? Because you and I both, I've I've got the radio show, you've got the martial arts, I've got Vita, you've got Vita. What else have we got? we got our books, photography, you've got art. Mm -hmm. And we both have got um, spouses that have their own share of problems. You still have to work an outside job. I have a full-time job here at the house. But we still live our dreams. Would that be fair? Oh yeah. If I only had one dream to live, I'd be bored. I gotta, uh, yeah. you gotta keep moving forward. You gotta keep stretching it. I gotta expand. Yeah, because Absolutely. if you don't, you stagnate. It's it's like only learning one set of martial arts. I mean, one set leads to another set to another set. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta so, expand. You gotta gotta give yourself room to grow. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Tom and I can have these conversations because we've been friends for many, many years, and he's mm-hmm. written me notes and said, I'm going to do this and that, and I'm going to say, not if you want to continue living as you currently now. Know what you're not. You will. <laughs> <laughs> Love and he say, yes, ma'am, and, <laughs> and not give up because we don't give up. No, we don't. But we might get down, and then because – we have this core group. I have this core group of, of author friends that I've had for many, many years, and Tom is one of them. We got burned by a publisher, and, and we have coalesced around each other. And, I, Tom, I don't know what I'd do without you, my friend, because you oh, and here. Young, here. and Deborah and Ann B. Keller and Fran Ornstein and Deborah Simpson, y'all have been the rock that has kept me grounded. Yeah, you guys have done the same for me many, many so times. If, if if we don't have that, ladies and gentlemen, it's we can fulfill our dream, but it's not half as much fun because we play off of each other all the time. Now, what Tom's going to do is he's going to go back and he's going to hit Kelly up and he's going to say, go ahead and finish the book. Get it out there because he knows if he doesn't, then he will get a visit by things that he doesn't <laughs> want to see. <laughs> And they will be saying, bless your heart, as they beat him about the head and shoulders. But that being said, without these people, because as artists we sometimes do have low self-esteem because that's the nature of our beast, but we don't feed each other's low self-esteem. When one gets down, we all jump on that one and say, get up, you're not staying down there. Is that a fair statement? Very fair, yeah. That's how you move forward. Stone falls, you pick them up, and you keep them going. Exactly. So so what, what Tom and I are saying tonight, uh, minus all of the, the, the fun and the laughter which we have, is this, if you have a dream, if your child has a dream, if your spouse has a dream, your significant other, your best friend, help them and help yourself live that dream. Because, number one, we only yes. go around once. And, number two, you don't want to be that person. I'm talking about that person on the deathbed, and somebody says, oh, do you have any regrets? Well, yeah, I have this, and this. don't be that person. I don't care what it is. Garbage collector, skydiver, I don't care. And if the yeah. dream changes, that's okay, too. And if you have more than one dream, that's okay, too. Make yeah, it brilliant. happen. Don't yeah. depend on to make your dream happen. You make it happen, and don't allow someone else to steal it without your permission. Tomorrow night, fellow author Gary Starter is going to be on here. We're going to talk about his latest accomplishments. Tom, cool. thank you, my sweet, sweet friend, for being my guest tonight. It's always Thanks so much fun. The hour flies by, and I'm going to bring yeah. you back in August, and we will discuss the newly published book. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> see, see how Yvonne doesn't take no for an answer? Yes, ma'am is uh, perfect yeah. because he, if if he doesn't say yes, ma'am, I'll just say bless your heart and he'll know he's in trouble. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, you two can have this much fun living your dream, I'm telling you. Join me tomorrow night at 8 o'clock about his books. 
Join me on Tuesday night with the band Cypher out of Canada. I'll be off on Wednesday night. Thursday night is Sarah McAdams at 8 o'clock and my friend and cousin author Dana Davis at 9 o'clock. And beyond that, I'm at a loss because I didn't bring my stuff back with me. Until tomorrow (laughs) night at 8 o'clock, we say good night and bless your heart. Yeah, bless your heart, everyone. (laughs) You like that, huh? (laughs) I do. Love it. So now you got to build a, a southern character. Have to have two yep. or three of them because they they don't work well singularly. But as soon as we get off from here and this thing uploads, I'm going to put it on my page and tag you in it. I want you to put it everywhere so everybody can listen to it. And then tomorrow I'll upload all the podcasts and send you the six okay. podcasts and use Sounds it great. because you got to get your work out there. My friend has been way too long. He has. Um, the one one. Problem. It's not really a problem. Problem. It's kind of a problem just because of my current situation. Um, Kelly was saying that she wanted uh, 400 to get stuff done and get it out there. I just don't have that right now. My sister's going in for surgery, and I just don't have. Ooh. How is she, she doing? Cancer. Oh, honey. Um. Yeah, they're gonna be removing her tongue. And they're going to be putting in the feeding tube, and she's gonna not be able to talk. And yeah. Oh, bless your heart. Well, I will add her to my prayer list. And of Thank course, you. the people yeah. in archives can hear this when they listen to the archives. So I know they will add her to your prayer to their prayer list too. But um, yeah, that's well, um, that's that's like the main the main reason I can't do it right now. Though I didn't, I didn't want to say it like. You know, we're having a really fun interview. <laughs> I don't want to spoil the mood, you know. Oh, well, you could have said it. Because <laughs> I, okay. I would have immediately switched gears and, and said publicly how important you are to me, and you know that. Oh, yeah, I do. And, Thank you. And I just, my heart is breaking for you right now, and you know I'm here. You know I'm oh, here yeah. for you. And it's Absolutely. it's going to get it's going to get a lot rougher for the whole family, so just. Don't be afraid to reach out. Don't don't become an island. Okay. That's what we want. Because that's that's the worst thing you can do. And yeah, you just, you just got to God's got to up my blessed heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, <laughs> and and I mean that in the in the gentlest, most complimentary yeah. sense. Not as an insult. Yeah. Because yeah. I've been yeah. where you are. You know I've been where you are. Yeah. And reach out. Just God has a plan. Have that faith that God knows things more than we do. When is she having yeah, her surgery? Next uh, Thursday. I'm going. I'm working Monday and Tuesday, and Wednesday night I'm going because we're going to be staying in a hotel. It's out of town. I'm going to be staying in the hotel with them until, like, after everything's done. Um, well, let me know. On Thursday. Let me know on Thursday how you're doing, how things are going. Okay. Yeah, I'll send you a text or something. To let yes. you know what's up. Let me know what's going on, and I will keep her in my prayers all day long. Well, I'll start tonight. She's going on my prayer list. Oh, thank you. And you're on my prayer list all the time. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all need it. We we all need yeah. it. So um on that note, my my sweet kind friend, we'll figure out a way to uh-huh. get your book out there. Don't worry about it. We'll we'll figure okay. it out. Cuz you okay. got yeah, to get this, book out. Yeah, it's it's been too long. Yes, it has. It really been has. So we'll figure out a way. No worries. Okay. And that on that um on that end. Thank so you. I'm going to I'm going to say in closing, you are very well loved and appreciated. Oh, and I appreciate, appreciate you too. I appreciate you spending an hour with me and give your wife a hug for from me for okay. turning you loose for an hour to have fun with me on the show. Okay. And She's also been in my prayers many, many times. She still is, because I know she's got some issues too. 
Yeah. So, yeah. There is a bigger plan, my friend. There is a bigger plan. We're not in control. We can only control that which we can control. Some things are out of our control, and we have to let the man upstairs control it. Yeah, it's, it's hard sometimes, but it's something we got to do, though. And if we say sometimes we give it to him, just... we really got to give it to him, because if we don't give it to him, then we're calling him a liar, and right. I don't think he lies. So, no, no if, one, if, I wouldn't want to do pick a man. <laughs> no. So give it up to him and understand he's in control and he knows he knows the future we don't and everything will work out like it's supposed to and when you go and see your sister please give her a hug from somebody she doesn't even know and let her know that she is continually in my prayers. I would do that. And on that note, bless your heart. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna leave you laughing and say good night, my sweet friend. Uh, good night. And when I when you I get when evening. I get back to my when I get back to my calendar, I'll see what I've got open in August and send it over to you and see if that's good for you. Sounds great. Okay. All right, darling. All right. Is a Friday or Saturday <laughs> night better than during the week? Um, actually, Wednesdays are the best because I have that day off, like automatically. Okay. And sometimes, like where I work at, if they're too short, I stay over. And if I okay. stay over on a day that, you know, I wouldn't be able to do the interview. And I'd hate to leave you hanging last minute like that. I would understand. But I, I, I've i got some Wednesdays open in August, so I'll put you down for one. That sounds great. Okay. All right, darling. Talk at you later. Okay. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Insurance-minded speeches from GEICO. Hardship. My grandmother would go through it every month to pay her insurance bill. First, she would handwrite a paper check, in cursive. Then, using her own tongue, she would wet a stamp for an envelope. Today, however, we need not weary our hands and tongues. Today, we can pay our GEICO bill with the GEICO app. Away with hardship, in with bill pay on the GEICO app. Thank you. Are you ready to lose those love handles? Do you work hard to stay in shape and eat healthy, yet you can't get rid of stubborn fat? Now there's a clinically proven way to help you look slimmer without surgery or downtime. It's called Sculpture. Sculpture's innovative procedure destroys fat in just 25 minutes with visible results as quickly as six weeks. Sculpture sounds amazing, right? Check it out for yourself by clicking on the banner or go to goodbyefat.com. 